We've had speaking events before. We've had speakers come to campus, even past IDF, you know, members and, and soldiers. And we've never had a situation like this. Um, more so, I think what students fail to understand that in Israel, everyone is required to serve in the IDF. Um, there's nothing political about it. There's nothing, you know, it, it's really not political. You have required army service. And during a time of war, you are then called back into the reserves, which again, I think there's a, a misunderstanding. So Ram Barr was actually coming to speak about international law, which I, again, I don't think the greater community really understood and it, and it turned into, you know, one of the most horrific days for Jewish students on campus. The event was supposed to start at 6.30. At around 5 p.m., there were already these protesters rallying outside the original location, which was Wheeler Hall. Um, and just to put this into perspective, this is during t during a time of lecture. So many students are in class, many students are in discussion sections, and already at 5 p.m., they're being disturbed from their lectures. There's protesters yelling and screaming and chanting. So already at 5 p.m., this is all starting, but thank goodness they are at the old location, not the new location. My co-president was actually in lecture during this time, and as he was walking out, he was telling me how relieved he was feeling because he was seeing these protesters at this old location. And just, I mean, put that into perspective, a Jewish student is walking out of a building, there's hundreds of protesters already, already rallied up to go, ready to go, and he's feeling a sense of relief because he, the, these protesters are there and not at this new location. Now, unfortunately, around, you know, 6.15, Bears for Palestine posts that the location was moved and they put on their Instagram, you know, everyone now come to Zellerbach Playhouse. So they're actively, actively promulgating students and propelling them to now come to this new location. Um, and they did. And I was leaving my house around this time at, you know, 6.10, 6.15, and I'm already getting texts. You know, they found the new location. Should we come? Is it safe? What are we doing? Um, and we already had some organizers there. There were already, you know, students coming in that were now protesting, chanting. And I'm sure you've seen the videos. And if you haven't, I really encourage you to look them up. Um, they're banging on the doors. They're banging on the windows. You can feel it shaking underneath you, the building. Um, you know, they're yelling, they're screaming, they're pushing against UCBD to try to get in. Some people get in. We had three physical assaults and I can walk you through them. The first was a, a freshman girl that was pulled into the crowd of rioters and she was choked by the neck, right? And this is a freshman girl, first year on campus. And I'm just thinking about myself. If this was my freshman year on campus, I, I don't know how I would, you know, even muster up the courage to stay for three more years. Um, and those photos of her neck, you can visibly see it red after, after this incident. And UCPD did nothing. There were no arrests made. There were no names taken down. And I don't know. I, like, I really have no words to say about this. That was incident one. The second incident was a girl who was at um, name check. So letting people in, making sure they were on the RSVP list and letting them in, looking at their student ID. And when protesters obviously started to come in, she was, first of all, you know, slammed into the door. She was trying to hold back the door from the inside, again, yelling for help from UCPD. Nobody came. This is a girl alone trying to hold back a door. You know, there's only so much strength that she has while there's hundreds trying to push it open. She actually went to urgent care and, you know, had a brace on her on her hand because she was, again, physically hurt by this and also just so traumatized. Genuinely, imagine you're just one girl standing waiting to check people in and you're people are saying those vile, outrageous things to you and you're calling for help and nobody's coming. So that was incident two. And the third incident is a uh, sophomore boy who was try to get, again, pulled into the crowd by these rioters. Uh, they were yelling at him, screaming at him, calling him slurs, calling him a dirty Jew, and trying to spit on him. Thank goodness they missed. But again, these these interactions are not normal. And, you know, the fact that, you know, UCP did nothing, the fact that no arrests were made, the fact that a window was broken um, and the event was shut down and students were quite literally escorted out of the building and through an underground tunnel through the other way out, um, just so that their physical safety uh, could be ensured.